Respected brothers, sisters, scholars and elders, Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed all of us with another Yawmul Jumu'ah, a day in which we have been permitted and allowed and aided to wake up as Muslims in health, in well-being, in safety and security, all of the greatest ni'am and blessings of Allah we are benefiting from as we sit here today. For that we must always be grateful, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. I want to speak today about a topic which is very important and it is from the foundations of our deen. And the topic is called Al-Ihsan. Ihsan. When Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the hadith known as Hadith of Jibreel and he came to teach the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam about the foundations and the primary most important things in our deen. So the Sahaba narrate, Umar ibn Khattab narrates that one day we were sitting in the masjid and a man wearing very white bright clothes came and approached the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He looked very sharp and very clean and very neat, but nobody recognized him. If he was traveling, then his clothes and his outfit shouldn't be as neat. That's the impression. And if it is local, if he is local, then someone would have recognized him. So something amazing was already happening. This man comes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the form of a man, but it's actually Sayyidina Jibreel. And he takes his knees right next to the knees of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sitting face to face with him, approaching him closely. This is from the adab of speaking to people to face them completely. Not to speak from the side or from above or from your cheek. That's Islam does not teach that. When you want to speak to somebody, address them. Address them in full, full direction, just like we're doing right now. And so Sayyidina Jibreel comes and asks the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Mal Islam. O oh, Prophet Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, what is Islam? And so he then teaches him afterwards what Islam is. He says, Islam is that you should testify the two testifications. Then he says, What is Iman? And then he asks him the third question, What is Ihsan? And so in all of these cases, Sayyidina Jibreel is teaching Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he says Ihsan is that you should worship Allah as if you can see him and if you can't reach that level where you can make yourself realize that you could try to feel like you can see Allah in your ibadah then at least acknowledge that Allah can see you. But Ihsan does not only restrict itself to or is not restricted to ibadah only. Ihsan is something that goes into every aspect of our life. Ihsan is in your ibadah, yes. Ihsan is also in your action. Ihsan is also in how you speak and how you, your body language is, how you approach others, how you present yourself to others. And the virtues of Ihsan are so many. Allah loves those who do Ihsan. So what is Ihsan? Ihsan is that you try to do a task to the best of your ability. Al-Itqan. Whenever you do something, whether it's your salah, or your zakat, or your fasting, or your jumu'ah, all of it you try your best to do it in the best way possible. Whether it be treating somebody else, in your character, in your behavior, how you treat your parents, how you treat your children, how you treat your spouse, how you treat your managers, how you treat your employees, how you treat your musallis, how you treat your imam, all of this goes into the chapter of Ihsan. It means that you try to do it to the best of your ability. In your actions and in your qawl. Allah says in the Quran, Wallahu yuhibbul muhsineen. Allah loves those who do Ihsan. Allah says also, Hal jaza'ul ihsani illa al-ihsan? The reward of trying to do things to the best of your ability, trying to do ihsan, the reward of it is nothing but ihsan from Allah. <coughs> you try to perfect your character, your action, your ibadah, your qawl, your amal, by doing ihsan, Allah will do ihsan, hal jazaul ihsan illa al-ihsan in Surah Al-Rahman. It doesn't just stop there, Allah doesn't give you ihsan based on your effort, Allah says, وَسَنَزِيدُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ we will give extra and multiplied reward to those who do Ihsan, subhanAllah. Now, normally when we speak about Ihsan, we speak about Ibadah. But today I want to move on a bit further. 
I want to speak about ihsan in character and treating others to those who have the biggest right of good treatment from us. I have received multiple requests to speak about how to deal with a family home in which there are extended family. When it comes to in-laws, when it comes to the sister getting married into a family and living with the husbands, parents, brothers and so on. This is a very tricky topic. This is a very important topic. Tricky and important. And a lot of Imams and Khatibs will avoid it because it's too tricky. Because some will say this guy's good, others will say this guy's bad. So it's a risky topic. But when we deliver a khutbah, it is for the sake of Allah. I will try my best to say it in the best way possible. If after that it, it offends somebody, then what can I do? And I will try to only say what is established from the Quran and from the Sunnah and from the Qawl of the Ulama. And so if that does not please somebody, I can't do anything more. My friends, my brothers, my sisters, my elders, when we bring our children up, when we you know, uh, teach them, when we train them, it is our first priority that my son, my daughter, I want them to eat best, correct? Eat best. I want them to dress well. I want them to study well. I want them to have a good life. I want them to be happy. I want them to be happy. I want them to be, you know, successful in everything that they do. And so you send them to the best school and buy them the best clothes that you can afford and feed them the best, best food that you can afford. We all do this. This is biological. Human beings, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, would do this. But there comes sometimes that we forget the best interest of our children and sometimes we allow for culture and expectation of others to override what's in the best interest of my child. Normally we care about my child's best interest. But sometimes this thinking of what will people say? What are my uncles, my neighbors expecting from me? We allow for those imaginations and those th thoughts and thinking to override what's actually what we should be actually doing. What I mean by that is, when you get your children married off, MashaAllah, your son, you married him to a, a, a woman that you are happy with, that you help to choose. Khalas. Now, once that's happened, as a father, as a mother, as a mother-in-law, as a father-in-law, I want to make a joke here. You know, sometimes they say that the mother-in-law and father-in-law, sometimes they behave like outlaws. In-laws and outlaws, so I said, play on words. Anyway, it's, we should approach these tricky topics with a bit of a light-hearted so that we don't get upset. We should treat, when we become father-in-law and mother-in-law, now, my son is married to a woman. We've brought her into our home. Khalas, this woman now is your daughter. You say in-law, but she is your daughter. It's unfortunate that sometimes we will find homes in which that daughter-in-law is treated like just a maid, just a worker. She has to serve her husband, she has to serve the parents, she has to serve the sisters that are living in the house, and they're fully capable. Okay, for a moment I will say parents, they're unwell, they're old, they should do khidma. Tamam, I agree with you. But then the sisters are also in the home, they're chilling on the sofa. And the Barbie is expected to give them bed and breakfast every single day. So this is the kind of imagination, expectation. Wallahi, it's not from Islam. Qasim and Billah, it's not from Islam. You will not find it anywhere in the Quran and Sunnah. And the problem is that it's oppression. You're harming somebody else. Yes, you want to go and do golf and have a discussion with your family. Say, oh, my beau, my daughter-in-law is so good. She makes breakfast early. But is she happy? Is she content? Is she able to? Does she work? Maybe she has other commitments. So many things. My general principle is, when you bring someone into the family, you have to really, don't just say it for words. They are truly your daughter, your daughter now. A part of your family. Just like you would want for your daughter, you should also expect and want for your daughter-in-law. Because your daughter will also become a daughter-in-law one day. And kama tadinu tudan, the way you treat others, you will be treated. And so exactly how you'd want others, another father-in-law, another mother-in-law to treat your daughter, you should treat this daughter-in-law of yours in the exact same way better. This person is a guest in your house. Deserve better treatment, special treatment. I'm not going to go into the whole home arrangements and, because that's a longer discussion. I just want to say that this is an amana from Allah. 
Allah loves it when you do ihsan to anybody. Subhanallah, a woman will go to Jannah because she fed water to a thirsty dog. And another woman will go to Jahannam because she was cruel to a cat. If someone can go to Jannah by being kind to a dog, imagine how much reward you will get for being kind to people, to human beings. And now imagine if they are your relatives, if they are your parents, if they are your children, if they are your daughters and your sons and your daughters and sons-in-law. There is an imbalance in our culture. And I'm speaking specifically about our culture because we are from this culture. We treat the son-in-law like a prince. Daughter-in-law, Allahu alam. It differs time to time, place to place. Wa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Ahmadullah hamdul shakirin wa nusalli wa nusallim ala nabi al-kareem Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. Building on from that, to carry on with that discussion in summary, I say my friends, my brothers, my sisters, Allah is watching your actions. Allah loves that you do ihsan and try to perfect your character and be good, say good, do good to others, especially to those who are close to you. If by your behavior, your strictness and your rigidity with your daughter-in-law and your son-in-law, you become the means of a family breaking up. If you contribute to that, that you are your rigidity and your, your obedience to your culture, which is not perhaps Islamic, but it's restricting, having a, a bad effect on somebody else. If you contribute to the breakup of a family, you will have Allah to answer to. And the breaking of, of a family, of a marriage, is the day when Iblis celebrates. The most beloved thing to shayateen is that a family breaks up. So we should do the opposite. Do everything in our capacity to make their marriage better. For them to have a better, healthier marriage, a happier marriage, a more joyful, a friendly, a loving and caring marriage. May Allah give us understanding and tawfiq to implement and to be creative and to think how we can overcome this big uh, challenge in front of us. Rabbana zhulamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunna min khasirin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatum wa fi al-akhirati hasanatum wa qina a'zab al-nar. Allahumma taqabbal minna innak anta al-sami'u al-alim. Wa tub alayna ya maulana innak anta al-tawab al-rahim. Allahumma ayyidi al-islam wa al-muslimin. Wansur ikhwan al-musudhafin fi mashariq al-ardi wa magharibiha. Wansurhum fi filistin wa fi al-yamani wa fi al-shami wa fi kashmir. Wa fi al-sin wa fi al-iraq wa fi kul al-bilad ya rabbil alameen. Allahumma ansur ikhwanana fi bangla ديش. اللهم صل إخواننا في سلحد اللهم صل إخواننا في زكي غونج وفي خانرقات يا رب العالمين اللهم انصرهم عن السيول يا رب العالمين اللهم احفظنا من كل سوء مكرون يا رب العالمين وصل الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأقن الصلاة